So a long while ago there was a little something that I said on stream. It's something that my chat would not allow me to forget, so take a quick listen. If I ever hit Grandmaster chat and quote me on this, if I hit Grandmaster with Zenyatta, I'm gonna make a Zenyatta guide. I'm gonna not make a like how to play Zenyatta. Well, so I sat down and scripted said Zenyatta guide and this script turned out to be really fucking long. And that for a video where the best advice is honestly just learn to point and click better and don't stand out in the open. So instead of making this 10 to 15 minute guide that goes in depth as to what you should do, how you should do it and why it makes sense, I decided to start this little mini series where I just come up with a handful of quick tips that will help you become better at a hero right now. Now. Time is of the essence these days and who really cares about an in-depth guide from a boosted YouTuber anyway. So since these are supposed to be short videos, let's get right into it. Number one, your first priority is always to get your ultimate. I would like to dismiss the notion that Zenyatta is the healer of the squishies or any nonsense like that. There are a lot of reasons why prioritizing to heal tanks over squishies makes a whole lot of sense as Zenyatta. But to make a long story short, whenever you don't have your ultimate, make it your priority priority to do your darkness to get it as fast as possible. You don't want to fall behind in the tempo game and a good Genji in particular can build up his blade really quickly. If you get caught with your pants down and no trance against an ulting Genji, you're screwed. Zenyatta's ultimate is a very powerful defensive tool. So whenever you don't have it available, prioritize healing on big, easy to hit targets that are more likely to take damage. And in the same vein, make sure you focus your damage on the enemy tanks. The more damage or healing you can pump into them to get your ultimate ultimate, the better. Number two, don't forget to worry about where you end off after using your transcendence. Listen, obviously you want to get as much healing out on your teammates as possible when using your ultimate, but don't forget that you also get a speed boost while using it. It is important for you to take a close look around to see where the enemies are at. Sometimes it can make a lot of sense to use the last couple of seconds of your trance to zap yourself next to the enemy Anna to then smash your balls in her face. But other times you rather want to make sure that you don't get too shot by a McCree or that you don't want to get hooked by a Roadhog. Bottom line is really just that the last second and a half of your ultimate should be dedicated to repositioning yourself if necessary. Whether that means you chase down the remaining enemies that manage to avoid the onslaught or whether that means you hiding behind the payload, always make sure that wherever you end up being makes sense. Number three, you are a frontline healer. Don't let the fact that you don't want to be in the front yourself fool you. You are supposed to heal your frontline. That simply means that you should prioritize putting orbs on teammates that are most likely to take damage in relation to how much HP they have left. You're not like Lucia where you can speed boost a teammate into safety and then heal them. You're also not like Mercy where you stitch your team back together from a safe position. And you're sure as hell not Anna in that you can rapidly heal up a teammate that decides to go balls to the wall. I've seen too many Zenyatas decide to only heal their flankers or squishy DPS while their tanks are crying for help. Listen dude, if your McCree is already taking cover anyway, then then odds are that he's more likely to survive the next few seconds than your Zarya that is currently getting slashed to bits by a horde of angry platinum hyenas. Preemptive as also active healing needs to prioritize targets that are most likely to take damage and that for the sole reason that your healing is not significant enough to make either healing up in safety nor allowing a teammate to go balls to the wall a viable option. Don't encourage DPS players in solo queue to overextend by preemptively healing them. It gives them a false sense of security and they more often than not don't pay attention to keep LOS to you in order to refresh the orb cooldown. So again, always put your healing on targets you think are most likely to take damage and not those that have the smallest health pool. Number four, take advantage of your orb volley. This is something people on stream have asked me a few times already. Why bother charging up your right click if you can send the same amount of orbs flying with your left click? Well, for the simple reason that it's way more difficult to dodge a volley of five orbs than five orbs that have been shot individually. You have to realize that every shot you take in an enemy telegraphs the next. You are simply telling them that they are your focus of attention right now, meaning they can use the time in between your shots to take cover. But your right click can do tremendous amounts of damage and even take enemies out of the fight immediately without them even having a chance to realize the threat and take cover. So it is advised to always charge up your right click from a safe position whenever you think you're about to run into an enemy. But the only thing you have to understand is that your right click goes for a ton of damage that is very difficult to dodge if 
used and aimed properly. As long as you understand that simple fact, you should be able to figure out on the fly when one makes more sense than the other. And lastly, number five, play something. What I mean by that is just that you should not be caught out in the open and you also shouldn't be caught out all on your own in the back if the enemies are running flankers. Always play something. Whether you play corners or a pole, your teammates or the payload, use anything you can get your grubby hands on as a means of cover. Zenyatta has no mobility to speak of, meaning if you can't juke an enemy around some sort of obstacle, you're very likely to get melted very quickly. There are two things you always have to keep in mind when positioning yourself. Number one, you don't have any mobility that allows you to reconnect with your team, let alone anything that helps you disengaging when someone jumps on you. And number two, your hitbox is disgustingly easy to hit. Never forget these two things on positioning yourself as Zenyatta and keep them in mind when deciding which matchups you want to take. Obviously, there are more things to be said about playing Zenyatta well, particularly in high elo. However, I feel like these quick tips are universally applicable for anyone who decides to pick him up today, no matter which elo you play in. Zenyatta's utility, more so than anyone else, is directly tied to how long you can stay alive as him. Discord Orb is a very powerful tool and Transcendence is arguably the strongest defensive ultimate in the game. Knowing where you should be at any given time to make sure your kit is always available for your team to take advantage of is vital. So take these tips my friends and go melting stupid faces into the ground from this day on. Thank you everybody so much for watching, I hope you enjoyed the video and if you did, don't forget to drop me a like on your way out, subscribe if you want to see more and hope to see you all next time.